Okay, let's talk about the Praxis Core Exam. So if you're watching this video, I assume that you already know what the Praxis Core Exam is, but just in case you don't know exactly what it is, by the way, there's many different Praxis uh, exams. So um, clearly, if you're watching this video, you're either somebody who's going into um, teaching as, going into a teaching program, or actually getting a certification passing a praxis so you can teach a particular subject uh, in a public school in certain states. Now um, many states uh, use the praxis exam but in other states like say California there's other exams such as the CBEST or CSET etc. But enough about that. Um, so we're going to be focusing in uh, specifically on a praxis core and generally speaking uh, for the most part, the Praxis Core is a test that uh, most colleges require for you to enter into their teaching program. So it's critical, and, and they're going to be kind of assessing your, you know, your general academic background. And in particular, what we're going to be talking about in this video is the math uh, part of it. And we're going to look at a particular math problem. We'll go over it. Um, we'll get to that in just one second. But the math on the Praxis Core. I would say uh, is a good, um, when you look at the description of it, if you have really strong algebra, geometry, and probability and statistics knowledge, let's say at the high school level, then you should do very well on the, the Praxis Core exam. So you kind of have to think back to those days when you were studying this. Some of you have been away from math for a while. If you're looking for like a good course, a good review course for mathematics, and you like my teaching style, if you, you know, let me just say right up front, I'm a math teacher, teach sixth grade all the way through high school, I have a lot of experience, and years ago, I, uh, I actually had to take the Praxis uh, to teach uh, high school level mathematics. So, you know, I definitely understand this on many different levels. So I'll leave the link in the description of this video if you wanna check out my specific uh, Praxis Core Math Prep course. But with that being said, let's take a look at this problem here. So this is something that you should be able to do or have the kind of skill level uh, to be able to handle this kind of problem in order to do well, let's say, on the Praxis Core. Now, what we're looking at here is something we call a complex fraction situation. Now, just because it's not algebra or, you know, you don't see variables and all that kind of stuff, people are like, oh, this is just arithmetic, basic math. Well, I can tell you right now, I can probably give this to a class of 30 students in an Algebra 2 exam, and probably 25% of them will get this wrong, okay, because they make mistakes. Now, let's just talk real quick about uh, a few things, and then I'm going to go over this problem uh, completely. And let me just say this much. Um, you should pause the video at some point here before you see my solution and try it on your own, and then we'll go over it together. But let me just quickly... Um, tell you some of the ways you need to be thinking about math when you do a math problem and maybe before you do this math problem think of it in this way because it's going to increase your chances of success. So in math uh, you have to take many different steps in order to get to the solution. Okay, What happens is many students they like to skip steps because they're just pressed for time so basically they'll do what they call like mental math. They'll be like, okay, yeah, I'm or two, two, three steps at once, and then just write this, and like, okay, I'm gonna do this, write that, and boom, and they go fast. And in their brain, they're like, okay, yes, I'm doing this correct. Once they have the solution, that they're done, and they move on to the next problem. I can tell you right now, through experience, uh, probably like say, the 50% of the errors people make on exams or test questions come from working too fast, come from, um, this working this algorithm of skipping steps and going too fast. So you need to like, if that's you, you need to stop that. And you just by stopping that process and getting control on it and having the discipline to do what? Well, you're going to write out each step. Okay. You don't have to go super slow, but go slow and double check your work as you go. If you do that, you're going to be increasing your odds right off the bat of getting something right. The psychology of a face in a math problem is, oh, I know how to do this. Here, here's, here, let's do this real quick, okay? So you look at the problem and you're smiling. Let's hear say, oh, I know how to do that problem. Yes, I'm gonna get it right. I'm gonna get it right. You're like, yeah, I'm gonna get this point, da, 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 da. I'm gonna, it's like getting money. I'm gonna get this and put it in my little, you know, test 
score bank account, right? So I'm going to go get this and then I'm going to deposit my points into my nice, my nice little account over here. So this is the kind of psychology. Here's the thing. You're in such a rush to go get those points, you make mistakes on things that you can do. It's the most frustrating thing to see as a teacher um, when you see students make a lot of errors. In other words, they'll go from like an A to a B because they messed up on the easy questions, okay? And, but all the harder questions they got right. So you need to have discipline on this thing. And so there's a lot of little things that, you know, obviously aren't gonna be in a math book that um, will significantly affect the results of your your uh, your scores. Now, if you're going into teaching, um, I'm just going to assume right up front that you know you're strong academically. So if I'm telling you pretty much things that you already know, then you know uh, don't mean to re, re, uh, you know bore you with that. But from a math standpoint, you know you have to have this discipline. And I can tell you as a math teacher someone with a master's degree, a degree in mathematics, yada, yada, even at high school level mathematics, if I don't concentrate, or even like this prom, if I don't concentrate and focus and use the disciplines that I talked about, I know personally that I'm going to increase my, my chances of getting that prom wrong, okay? Because we're all human beings. Our brains are, you know, distracted constantly. You got all, all kinds of background noise going on, so you have to focus. Okay, so enough of that being said, and that's not... Um, just kind of like tangential commentary that I'm talking about. The stuff I just got over telling you right there is extremely important. So take that to heart. Now let's apply it to this prom. So if you haven't done this prom, you may want to try to you know pause the video and see what you can come up with. Um, but what I'm going to do right now is actually go over it. Okay, so this is a complex fraction situation. Okay, we have fractions here in the numerator. We have fractions down here in the denominator, and then this one big fraction bar here is, uh, you know, obviously this whole thing is a fraction. So we have a fraction within a fraction within a fraction. So this is what we call a complex fraction. So what we have to do is manage this problem step by step. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to work on the numerator and the denominator independently. Okay. So we'll get the answers of each here all right so once we have our answer here for the numerator and our answer here for the denominator then we can go ahead and kind of go ahead and take the next step and deal with the whole thing and then we'll get our final answer okay so let's go ahead and do that now and I'm going to kind of speed this up a bit because um, I don't want to make this video any longer than it needs to be uh, so if you need to review fractions you know again no, that's all in my particular course, but do what you have to do. Okay, so let's take a look at this. One minus uh, two and one thirds. Right before we do anything, I want I want to ask you: Is this going to be a positive or negative number? The answer. Hopefully, you said negative. Okay. Look at the look at the situation. This is one of the key things that you can do to help yourself out. Get the signs correct. So if you had one minus two, forget the one third part, uh, the two and one third, just one minus two. Okay, you know this is gonna be negative one. So you know your answer is going to be negative, all right? Now let's take a look at the denominator real quick here. I have a negative one half minus, or I'm gonna add a negative one fourth. So what's gonna be the sign of this answer? Hopefully you said negative, okay? So a negative divided by negative is gonna be what? positive right so you just you know from before you even get going you can kind of audit yourself and be like okay my final answer needs to be a positive number okay so with that being said let's go ahead and do this real quick I have one minus two and one third okay so the way we could do this we're going to change this mixed number into an improper fraction so I got one minus uh, three times two is six 6 plus 1 is 7, right? So that's 7 thirds. So 1 minus 7 thirds, 1 is the same thing as what? 3 over 3 minus 7 thirds. So now I have what? This is going to be negative 4 thirds, okay? So our numerator up here is negative 4 thirds. Now I went pretty quick. Um, again, I'm assuming most of you out there 
know how to handle uh, this fraction situation, but where people get kind of messed up is they forget that this is a negative number and they'll just write down four thirds. Okay, you have to think of the signs. The things that I'm stressing to you, I've seen like over literally thousands and thousands of errors made by uh, all sorts of students over many years. <laughs> so if I'm stressing them to you, uh, tr you know, you know, pay attention, I guess, you know, right? And be like, okay, I'm not going to make that mistake. All right, so here is our answer for our numerator. Now let's go ahead now and work on the denominator. Okay, so we'll work on the denominator. And we have negative one half minus one fourth. We know this is going to be negative, so we need to get a lowest common denominator. So we know one half is the same thing as two fourths, right? So this is negative two fourths minus one fourth, all right? And that's going to give me what? Negative three fourths, okay? So hopefully you got that right. So then we have negative three fourths. Okay, so again, when you're working with fractions, all right, uh, when you're adding or subtracting, you want to get everything into an improper or proper fraction state. One half is the same thing as two fourths. You get your LCD, right? And then we're going to add the numerators. In this case, we're going to be adding two negative numbers and we get the negative three fourths. Okay, so if you got this so far, then that's excellent. So let's talk about how we deal with this complex situation, right? So a complex fraction is where we're dividing one fraction by another. So what this problem states at this moment, or this where it's at right now, it says this divided by this. This is what we're saying. Negative 3 fourths divided by negative 3 fourths. Okay, so let's write this this way. Negative, four, I'm sorry, negative, uh, not negative 3 fourths, negative 4 thirds excuse me, divided by negative three-fourths. Okay, so let's just double check our work. We have negative four-thirds divided by negative three-fourths, negative four-thirds divided by negative three-fourths, and now we can kind of just move to, to finish this problem, okay? So we took it out of this complex form and we wrote it in a nice logical way where we can actually calculate this. So the way we do this, right, is we're gonna flip this side, we're actually, we're gonna flip this fraction, take the reciprocal of it, right? And then turn this into multiplication. So this is going to be negative four thirds times negative four thirds, right? Cause I'm taking a negative three fourths and I'm flipping it upside down. So now I have to finish this up by just what? Multiplying the numerators, the respective numerators and denominators, so negative a negative four times a negative four is a positive 16, and three times three is nine. So that's positive. Remember, we, we knew from the get-go that our answer is gonna be positive, and there you go, 16 over nine, uh, it's positive. And we look to see if we can reduce this, we can't. So that is our final answer. Now, let me just say this. Um, never take your final answer as an improper fraction and turn it into a mixed number. Don't go like, okay, nine goes into 16 one time, that's nine, that's seven, and seven nights. Don't do this, okay, unless you have to take that step. Again, I've seen thousands and thousands of students go, they'll take this answer, which they have right, they'll mess up trying to make a uh, mixed number, okay, like one and seven nights or whatever, and then they'll mess up here, and then they'll turn this in, and they'll be wrong. Okay, so just what you need to do is when you have your final answer, make sure it's fully simplified and then look look to see where it's at on uh, your answer choices. Okay, so, you know, I kind of went over a lot of things quickly. I mean, I couldn't, I'm not going to uh, teach how to add and subtract fractions, multiply, divide, and everything else. Uh, but I did want to uh, go over complex fractions and kind of give you a, uh, uh, an example problem of as a reminder that you need to really be strong working with numbers. Okay, I mean, yes, algebra and all that stuff is important, solving equations and all that kind of stuff, but you need to have strong number skills. So fractions is a place where students like, you know, really mess up. Uh, another place where students make a lot of errors is using the order of operations, simplifying number expressions, etc. So things, you know, that you really want to start with, the basics, the fundamentals, just because of the basics and fundamentals doesn't mean that they're necessarily like easy to master. They take time, 
to practice. So that's where you want to start. So let's go and wrap up this video. Um, again, if you're, you know, if you feel like you can resonate with my teaching style, you like the way I teach, I'll leave the uh, my Praxis Core Math Prep course, um, the link, you know, to that uh, course in the description of this video. I literally have hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel that you can uh, definitely benefit from. If you enjoy the video, I would certainly appreciate a thumbs up. And last but not least, uh, leave me your comments. Let me know how things are going with your teaching, um, you know, career, whether you know what school you're going into, do they require the Praxis Core, you know, um, maybe some things that can um, benefit me in terms of learning about it. I certainly don't know everything. So by reading your feedback is the way I get better at what I do. But with that being said, I certainly wish you all the best on the Praxis Core teaching. It's a it's a rewarding uh, career um, and it's a challenging career. <laughs> I can tell you right now, uh, and I think now I'll say this um, as a you know former classroom teacher. I just think that sometimes the teachers really don't get the respect that they deserve um, because unless you've actually been a teacher, um, people just can't relate to it. You know, there's a lot of people that. Well, they'll comment about teaching or teachers don't do this and that teacher should have done that. But, you know, quite frankly, unless you've been in the role as an actual teacher, the people just don't really appreciate truly what you have to manage. I mean, and what you have to do and go through to become a teacher. It's quite a bit, you know, and that's why I'm passionate about helping uh, those of you that are going to be fellow educators out there. So with that being said, I wish you all the best on the Praxis Corps. Thank you for your time and have a great day.